Hey, what's up guys, it's Matt with The Movement System. In this video, we're gonna explain the fat burning zone. So we can probably all relate to the idea that we want to lose a little bit of body fat percentage, increase our leanness, increase our muscle mass, and maybe it's you or maybe it's your personal training client that we're thinking about. But there are some different approaches that we can take to this. Should we go on the treadmill and hit the fat burning zone button, or should we go do a HIIT training class? And is that the best way to burn fat? So you've probably seen some graphs like this one, or like this one, which have a zone of fat burning, and the theory here is that in that zone, we're burning the most amount of fat. So if our goal is fat loss, should we be working out in this fat burning zone? And there actually is some science to this, which we're gonna explore. So let's go ahead and dive into it. All right, so we're gonna approach this from the perspective of Susan. Susan could be your mom, your personal training client, or maybe you're Susan, and you're just trying to optimize your fat burning and get results. So we're gonna break down the science and see what happens if Susan decides to do the fat burning zone workout versus a higher intensity workout. Let's go for it. All right, so this is Susan. She's already looking pretty thin, but let's just say that she wants to lose some body fat and she's gonna take one of these two approaches. So option number one, we're gonna be over here in the fat burning zone. So based on the graphs and what the idea is of the fat burning zone, this is gonna be somewhere around 120 beats per minute or around a 50 to 60% intensity of exercise. So for Susan, who's maybe 30 years old, she might be around five to six miles per hour on the treadmill or doing an incline walk at maybe four miles per hour. And this would get her to a heart rate of around 120, maybe 130. And let's just say she's there for a 40 minute workout. So if this is the case, we could estimate that she would have ran about four miles or walked an incline. And either way, she would get to around a 400 calorie burn. All right, so knowing that she burned 400 calories, let's look at this graph to see how many of those calories were from fat versus how many were from carbs. So looking at this graph, at around a 50 to 60% intensity, she's burning maybe 50, 50 carbs fat, but let's give her the benefit of the doubt and say that she's burning 60% fat and 40% carbohydrate. This means that from the 400 calories that she burned, breathing hard and doing that 40 minute workout, about 240 calories were from her body fat. So she provided those calories from fat, versus 160 calories that she provided from carbs. And that carb could be coming from blood glucose or glycogen stores, but this is about where the calories came from to be able to do that workout. All right, so now let's go ahead and compare that to the high intensity training. So let's just say Susan did high intensity training that could be interval training, it could be weight training, it could be Metcon training, but the type of training that she did, she averaged 160 beats per minute throughout her workout. This works out to about an 80% intensity, and for a 40 minute workout, we can estimate that she burned about 560 calories total. All right, so going back to our graph, we can see that at about an 80% intensity, she's probably burning around 75% of her calories from carbohydrate and around 25% from fat. So a significantly lower percentage of fat oxidation and a significantly higher percentage of carbohydrate utilization compared to this fat burning zone workout. So in that workout, she actually burned around 420 calories from carbohydrate and 140 calories from fat. All right, so at this point, it actually looks pretty good for the fat burning zone because we actually burned more calories from fat in the fat burning zone, 240 calories from fat, than we did over here, only 140 calories from fat. So in theory, at the end of this workout, we actually burn more fat in the fat burning zone, and that's true. But what really matters at the end of the day is our total net muscle protein synthesis and our total net body fat loss over the course of 24 hours or a week or a month. And that's what we're gonna get into next. So let's assume in both cases that Susan is abiding by a 2,500 calorie daily diet. So her diet consists of 2,500 calories. Her expenditure in both cases, just from daily expenditure, so walking, daily activities, is 2,100 calories. In the fat burning zone workout, she also burned 400 calories from exercise to get a total of zero calorie deficit. Whereas on the higher intensity training side, because she had a greater number of calories burned total, she actually burned 160 calories more than she consumed and got to a 160 calorie deficit. And this is where the difference really matters. So in the 24 hour period following the fat burning zone, Susan actually replenished all of her muscle glycogen pretty quickly because she only burned 160 calories from her carbohydrate stores. So in her next meal, she replenished that. And then over the next 24 hour period, she actually just put back on that body fat that she lost during the workout. Because over here, we don't have a total calorie deficit. There's no way for Susan to actually lose body fat percentage over time even though during the workout she lost a higher percentage of calories from fat. 
The difference for Susan over here doing the high intensity training is that over the 24 hours after her workout, she's gonna have to replenish all these carbohydrates that she lost during her workout. So the next meal and the meal after that is gonna actually go to replenishing carbs and not building back up fat stores. So what really matters is that she actually got to a total calorie deficit and then over the course of weeks and months that can actually lead to substantial body fat loss and body fat percentage loss. All right, so I'm gonna to try to answer some questions that you might have. What if Susan did a longer training session in the fat burning zone, for example, 60 minutes versus a shorter session in the high intensity training zone, like 30 minutes? And in that case, you may actually see pretty equivalent results between the two because your total calorie burn would be more similar between them and overall you would get to more similar results whenever you get to the bottom line. Another question you might have is what about EPOC, which is excess post-exercise oxygen consumption? So after high intensity training, don't we rev up our metabolism and burn more calories for the next 24 hours? So shouldn't this daily ex energy expenditure be higher? And the answer for that is mm, kind of. With a high intensity interval training session, you may burn an extra 10% or so of calories over the next 24 hours. So it may actually be reasonable to add about 50 calories here to our daily energy expenditure because over the next 24 hours, it might take a longer time period for oxygen consumption to go back to baseline and therefore we would actually expect a little bit more energy expenditure throughout the day. And that could actually contribute to even better results with this high intensity training method. And if you're not familiar with what EPOC is, I actually do have a full video that breaks that down and explains it that I'll link below. And another question I wanted to answer is what if you're training carb depleted? And this is actually not a strategy that I would recommend because what you'll see is that this utilization would actually include protein as well. And even in a normal situation with adequate carb storage, you may see protein contribution of two to 3% in a normal situation, but in a carb depleted state, whenever you're trying to train hard, you might see that that protein contribution jumps up to 10% and that would actually make it really hard to reach net positive muscle protein synthesis. So in that case, in a fasted state where you're breaking down more proteins, you might actually lose muscle mass and that wouldn't be as ideal for long-term results. So overall, I wanna emphasize that it's not necessarily bad to do anything in the fat burning zone, it's just really not as time efficient and most people are time constrained here to a 30 or 40 minute workout per day. So if you're working with a personal training client or you're advising someone on how to work out, we probably will see more benefit from this higher intensity training zone for most people because that will actually help us tip the scales and see some of these results. There certainly can be a place for fat burning zone workouts. I think these actually do work pretty well, for example, as a recovery session or for a bodybuilder who's trying to get a little bit of energy expenditure but not burn themselves out and fatigue with doing higher intensity cardio moves and other situations like that where you have a lot of time to train and you're trying to optimize. So hopefully understanding the science here and knowing how this breaks down and really works will help you make the right training decision for yourself and your clients. Thanks so much for watching guys. Make sure you subscribe so you don't miss any future videos and I'll catch you in the next one. Thanks.